Nicole, Barbara, thank you so much. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm an actor, and uh, I've spent most of my adult life playing different roles on stage, TV, film. Doctors, lawyers, uh, good guys, bad guys, cops, thieves, uh, and uh, playing these roles requires a certain amount of preparation and research and uh, hopefully a good script. That's always important. And uh, of course, I'm getting a phone call and I'll turn off my phone. <laughs> it's probably one of my kids. Um, you know, whatever role you play, you know, as I say, you start off with a good script and you do uh, whatever preparation's necessary, whatever research is necessary, and then you, uh, you learn the lines, you hit the marks. And uh, the secret is to make it all look real. So, uh, tonight, and uh, of course, it's, it's a make-believe world, and uh, you know, we're, we're, as children, our make-believe world was very important to us. I mean, it was what we uh, held on to and what we enjoyed playing. And for those fortunate, fortunate uh, of us to grow up, and uh, uh, the real world, co world confronts us pretty uh, quickly, and sometimes in good ways, sometimes in bad ways. Uh, Sometimes suddenly, sometimes gradually. Sometimes things are good, and sometimes things aren't so good. Sometimes we fight, and sometimes we can't. Uh, Viktor Frankl wrote a wonderful book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in this book he says, everything can be taken from a man except one thing and it's the last of human freedoms. It's to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. And tonight I have the honor of presenting the uh, first Championship of Hope award this evening to a young man that not only had to build a foundation, I just met Josh, and he's a very impressive young man. He had to raise money and he also had to work on the science himself in an effort to save his life and others who may have been diagnosed with chordoma. And this young man has been an inspiration to many other patient advocates, scientists, researchers alike, for his tenacious and innovative approach to attacking this disease head on. Uh, for the, those of us who don't know, uh, chordoma is a, a rare type of cancer that occurs in the bones of the skull and the spine. It is part of a family of cancers called sarcoma, which include uh, cancers of the bone, cartilage, muscles, and other connective tissues. Recently, Josh was ranked one of Forbes magazine's 30 under 30 years old to watch for his approach to solving the uh, Cordoma puzzle and working to bring the first treatments and therapies to patients for the very first time. Uh, it, it is an honor, ladies and gentlemen, to, to present this year's tribute to Champion of Hope Award for patient-driven research to Mr. Josh Summer. Josh is the founder of the Cordoma Foundation and patient advocate extraordinaire. My pleasure, Josh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, it's a real honor to be here. I didn't realize I was going to uh, make Francis Collins get choked up. I apologize for that. Um, but um, no, it, it, I want to. I want to thank uh, Global Genes and and Nicole for. Uh, for this incredible honor. It's uh, really amazing for me to be here with so many people who uh, I've actually admired for many years and uh, who have helped us get where we are, um, in particular Steve Groft and 
and Francis Collins actually played a, a really uh, major role in helping the Cordoma Foundation get off the ground. Uh, in fact, I was talking uh, with Nancy Harris uh, from Nord earlier uh, this evening, and she said that probably many of us in this room have Steve Groff moments, uh, where, where Steve uh, just said yes and, and offered himself in so many different ways. Um, and it's actually amazing to think uh, how far we've come and how different things are now, seven years after I first met Steve. Um, so back then, I had just been diagnosed with Cordoma. Um, I was an undergrad at the time, and, um, and at that point had just recently learned that Cordoma was this rare disease with an average survival of seven years and really became determined with my mother uh, to try to do anything in our power to, uh, to change those odds. And um, actually, as luck would have it, it turned out that the only federally funded Cordoma researcher in the entire country was actually at Duke University in North Carolina, where I was a student at the time. Um, and uh, and I, you know, I didn't know the first thing about cancer research or molecular biology, but wanted to do something to, to, to get involved. And I ended up actually joining the lab and finding the work to be tremendously fascinating and learning a lot, um, but uh, very quickly realizing that one lab could only do so much and that if we wanted to really have an impact on this disease, that we were going to have to bring many more researchers into the fold, that we were going to have to create the conditions to make it possible for companies to invest. And, that led us to look to other organizations, many of whom are re represented in this room, um, who have really, I think, blazed a path that we were able to follow. Um, that search led us to people like Sharon Terry at the Genetic Alliance, to, to Nord, to Steve Groft, and to Francis Collins and others. And they really encouraged us to take this thing on and, uh, and to start an organization that uh, has now blossomed into the Cordoma Foundation. Um, so, you know, we're, set, we're almost seven years into this journey and we've come a really, really long way. I mean, it's hard to imagine back then there was one federally funded Cordoma researcher. We've now had over 200 researchers come to four international research workshops that uh, Steve was really instrumental in, in helping to, uh, to get started and to fund. Um, we've, uh, we, we've developed cell lines and animal models. We've identified uh, a gene that's altered 97% of Cordoma patients. We've identified other therapeutic targets. Now, finally, there are companies that are they're taking an interest in, in Cordoma. Um, but, you know, as, as exciting as it is to have come this far, uh, the reality is that the, the really hard work and, and arguably the, the most expensive work really lies ahead to actually take what we've learned and now develop therapies and test those therapies in clinical trials. Um, and that's really why I'm so glad that this organization exists, that uh, you know, it provides a voice to encourage investment in rare diseases, to encourage companies to take risks on rare diseases, uh, to raise awareness and to encourage individuals to you know, really step up and help all of us uh, make the progress we want to make. I, I think what Nicole said is, is so true, that it's, the problems are too big uh, for any one of us to tackle alone. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just so glad to see so many people here, so many people from companies and other, other similar organizations here to support this cause because I really do think that uh, we can go farther together. So thank you so much. It's a, it's a real honor.